Hello again, and welcome back to yet another video build. This time around, it's the flower pot version of Baby Groot. Cute, right? And I really hope you enjoy it. It's a Baby Groot flower pot. I know. It's like seeing another 3D printed Benchy boat. Or a Baby Yoda. But my wife really wanted one. And after 20 years of marriage, you kinda know when... Well, I made one. And I think it's about time I showed some of my smaller prop builds in these videos. Don't you think? It's all printed in PLA, at 0.12mm layer height. And the not so fun stuff, like sanding and priming, it's already done. So now, it's ready for painting. And actually, I'm just going to be sticking with some plain acrylic paints for this one. It's non-toxic, easy accessible and cheap. And with some patience and different techniques, you can get a pretty good depth to it, even without using any other kind of expensive paints. I like to start off with just a plain base coat, just to make sure I got it all covered. And with the right color and shade, it instantly makes it easier to see where you want to take it next. It kind of looks good already, doesn't it? Next, I move on to adding some shades and highlights. I pre-mix some small batches of paint, from light brown to darker brown. I chose the burnt umber as a base, but to give it some more life, I added in a little bit of yellow, green and even reds. This helps give the color more depth, and more lively I guess. The trick with getting the shades right when working with acrylics is to apply the shades wet. And what I mean by that is I just add some water, just enough to get that creamy consistency. Then I apply the different shades pretty heavily, from dark to light. And since I work in small areas at a time, I can go straight back in with a clean brush and smooth out all the transitions between them. Kinda like what you would do with oil paints. But doing this with acrylics, you gotta work in small areas at a time. Keep the paint wet and move quickly with the brush. And once you get to the point where it really starts to look good, don't be afraid to take it one step further. It's almost always worth it. Pretty happy with how things are turning out so far. And before the next part, it's important to make sure the paint is fully cured and maybe even put on a layer of varnish, because now it's time for some washes. Just like you would weather any kind of prop towards the end. And this really brings up more depth in it. At this point, I consider the body fully painted, so now I can move on to making the eyes. With a good brush and a steady hand, you don't really need any masking for this part. For the outer edges, or to be precise, the iris, I start off with a reddish warm brown undercoat. Then I follow up with a lot of thin paint strokes, all of which I keep in the same direction, towards the center of the pupil. Working this way, I use red, yellow and shades of brown to build up the color of the iris. And lastly comes the pupil. And it's really important to get those crisp, clean outer lines of the pupil. So make sure to focus and really concentrate on this part. Which in my case, this is the reality of it. Oh, 
And that? That was my 16 year old son watching a movie on full blast while playing soccer inside the house and the wifey singing something in the background. <laughs> Nevertheless, I love him to death. Now, back on point. And again, adding some water to get that creamy consistency to the paint. It really makes it easier to not get those visible brush strokes. We're getting pretty close to done now. I only need some crystal clear glazing on the eyes of some sorts. But first, a quick detour to the backyard. Just for some additional material to make the model stand out some more. And as for what I was looking for? This. Some kind of moss. I didn't need much. And after letting it dry out in the sun for a day. It lost a bit more of its color. But no matter. I was planning on airbrushing it anyways. I gave it all a good layer of varnish before applying some green paint to it. And just using some plain super glue, I stuck small pieces of moss on, all around the top of his head. It seems like really tedious work, but I don't believe it took me more than 10 minutes. Or the length of a coffee cup to be precise. Once that was done, I covered the whole prop from top to bottom with some flat matte varnish. And having recently become an expert on DIY hair cutting in these corona times, I gave him a quick trim. Which was kind of weird, but it ended up looking good. And my final step for this prop build is to add the shine for the eyes. Now there are probably many ways to do this, but a quick and easy way is to use some clear epoxy. Just mix it up according to the instructions and make sure to use a disposable brush. Then you have about five minutes of working time for putting it on, which is actually more than enough time. And if it's kind of misty and bubbly at first, don't worry, this will all go away once it's fully cured in a couple of hours. And I do believe that was the last bit of work I did on this prop. I believe that was it for this prop build. I really hope you liked it. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell, and I will try and share my next build with you. Which, by the way, is going to be this big guy in the background. Thank you for watching.